Hey everyone, this is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich with a quick update on the severe weather heading our way for our Tuesday, right before the 11 o'clock news here. We'll do this quick kind of update, a little informal kind of talking about what I think is going to happen. It's good news, bad news situation in this. Uh, we started wide with this over the weekend, like we knew there was going to be severe weather sometime on Tuesday into Wednesday. We're starting to narrow our focus down a little bit. Still a lot of details to be worked out, but we've got some better timing and kind of what we expect to happen. Uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Now the other good news about all this is we're starting to see the system weaken a little bit. It's not going to be as strong as the severe weather we're seeing to the west today. The bad news is it's not going to weaken completely. It's still a very potent storm system. So even at half the strength that we see to our west, it still means it's going to be a very, very strong system. Here's what it looks like on the radar and satellite together. You can see very potent system uh, across the middle of the country. I mean, we've had warnings, uh, tornado warnings as far north as northern Illinois, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. My concern is, is this stuff out ahead of the main line? We've got to keep a really close eye on these isolated cells that develop ahead of the main squall line uh, during the evening tomorrow. We could see supercells, which supercells are just another name for a rotating thunderstorm. They often can and do produce tornadoes, but they can also produce large hail and damaging winds. We're already starting to see that moisture return ramping up into the North Carolina mountains. The moisture is coming from the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. And what's happening is we're getting that ramping up into the North Carolina mountains, which is really producing uplift. And we're still getting some lift over the old wedge boundary, which is helping produce some showers. This is the mid-level jet on the European model. Uh, just look how strong these jet stream winds are in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We're talking between uh, you know 50 to 75 miles an hour and above 100 miles an hour at times. And as we go towards Tuesday evening, uh, this cuts off from the upper jet, which is going to be up in here, and we've got an upper level low. So we're getting the winds coming around like this, and then kind of a divergent flow. So what's happening, the low level winds are coming in like this, the upper level winds are going like that, and then we've got a little bit of rotation here. So that's what we call wind shear, and that's really going to crank up uh, ahead of this little low tomorrow afternoon into early Wednesday. But the low is actually still going to be around. Uh, through the end of the week. Looking at future casts, here's what it looks like as we go into the overnight hours. Notice the uh, numerous showers, even some thunder showers, some heavy rain. The thing we got to watch out for overnight is potential for flooding up here. But here's four o'clock tomorrow. This is when we start to see the line move in from the west. But we also uh, could see some isolated severe weather here if we get any sunshine. So even though the future cast doesn't show that, doesn't mean that it can't happen. By five o'clock, we definitely have some isolated cells and some embedded um, what we call supercell structures within this uh, quasi-linear convective system. We just fancy name for our squall line. And then by seven o'clock, we see this line moving into the Piedmont. And look at this thing. Once it gets here, it tends to park uh, through 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 a.m., um, 3 a.m. We're still at 4, 5, 6 in the morning, and then it finally starts to shift to the east. So not only could we have severe weather, but if that line parks on us, we certainly could see some flooding. So right now, these are the main storm impacts, uh, obviously damaging winds being a threat. Hail is probably the smallest threat of all of our impacts. Tornado threat, it's almost to the moderate range. It's high and low which means there's probably going to be between a 2 and 5% chance of isolated tornadoes. And the flood threat is moderate as well. As you just saw, that line could park over I-77 and help produce uh, some flooding rains. Here's the rough timing. And what I mean by timing is the start of the rain. Not that it's going to end between 2 and 6 in the mountains, but I think this is when we'll see the first leading edge of the line get to the mountains everywhere in red between 2 and 6 p.m. And then down into the orange area between... 5 and 9 p.m. and then back towards the east between 8 and 12 a.m. Again, this is the start of the system. It actually, once it starts, it's going to be around a while as you saw on Futurecast. The one thing to remember as we go into tomorrow, today we've been solidly in the yellow here, the outlook part of the equation here, the heads up. I've been giving it to you for a couple days to weather the plan your day. We're in the outlook mode right now. Tomorrow at some point, I fully suspect we'll have a watch likely a tornado watch could be issued because the potential for tornadoes is high enough that i do think they'll go with a tornado watch over a severe thunderstorm watch and then if the severe weather is detected on radar or spotted you get a warning so you start here and you work your way up to a warning people get these confused all the time a watch is basically conditions are not favorable prepare to take action once you get a warning take action now no questions asked you need to do what you need to do 
uh, before the system uh, really causes some issues. So that's a quick look on what I'm thinking right now. Of course, I'll be on at 11. I'll keep things up to date on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Google+, WCNC.com, my YouTube channel. Make sure you get the Weathercaster app. All of those things will be in play as we go into Tuesday. Hope you're prepared and make sure you stay, uh, stay you know, prepared for any kind of situation that could change in the next 24 to 36 hours.